Hello from the Arabella Boathouse. Since filming this episode, we have closed off the boathouse to visitors for the time being. Grandpa and Joe are keeping a safe distance from the project, although you will be seeing them both in today's video. We plan on soldiering on as much as possible and continuing to make videos here, so that we can hopefully provide you with a taste of normalcy in these new and abnormal times. We hope that wherever and whenever you are watching this, you are safe and healthy. We're all in it together. So a couple days ago, I took off out of here and went and did a little bit of climbing with my buddy Jeff, which was a lot of fun. Um, before we left, we tried to glue up the plank, and this is the last oak plank for Arabella. And we went to glue it up, and it was just way too cold. The wood just immediately got cold as soon as we took the box off. The glue seemed really thick. It just wasn't right. Uh, so we decided to, or I decided to just call it quits at that point. We stuck the plank into the, into the boathouse, and we took off, we went and did a little bit of climbing. Uh, which was great. I haven't climbed kind of hard like that in a long time. So it was good for coming off the couch. I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. It turns out boat buildings kept me in halfway decent shape. Um, and then I got back from climbing and the weather was still pretty cold and we got back later in the afternoon and I was pretty wrecked from camping out under the stars and doing all the climbing. And the weather for yesterday, which was the day after we got back, uh, was like 50 degrees, which was way warmer than it was when we tried to glue the plank and is much nicer gluing weather. Um, so since I was wrecked from climbing, I just did some oddball stuff around here that afternoon and yesterday cleaned up that scarf where we had put the glue on it and then Grandpa helped me and we got the uh, plank here into the heat boxes. He's going to come down in a couple hours and help me take the boxes off and bring the plank into the boathouse. And right now I'm going to go in and start pulling the measurements so that I can bring it in and mark it out as soon as it's done cooking. Um, yeah, it was just entirely too cold to do the glue. And I've learned that it's better when things aren't going right and things don't quite seem right to just stop and wait and do it when the time is right, the conditions are right, because um, otherwise you just end up with a mess. And it was a lot easier to clean some glue off the two faces than try to fix failed um, scarves. So I'm going to jump in the boathouse and see if we can pull some measurements so that we can get this thing marked out and cut and hung ASAP. So we are going to pick up some bevels for the last oak plank here. Now we've gone through this before, but maybe this is your first time joining us. Maybe you missed it. Sometimes it's good to have a refresher. Uh, so we'll try to blow through this pretty quick though. So what I do is I got a hundred foot tape, which is way more than long enough for the boat, but it's nice to be able to go the full length. And I'll go all the way down the boat like this. Once I have the tape laid out from stem to stern, or in our case here, from stern to stem, I can go through and pick up the bevels. So the angle that this top of the plank meets the frame. Four degrees, somewhere in there. And I'll write down all of these measurements. So this frame would end up at two feet, two inches for the center of it. We'll mark where all of the station molds are so that we have a good reference line. And we'll make sure because this angles, you know, that top of that plank is going to be you know, four or five inches aft of where the bottom is. So we'll make sure when we mark out the plank that there's some wiggle room at the stern and some wiggle room at the stem and then we'll cut it out and fit it. So I can pick up the bevel here and then what we're going to do is measure to the tip of the nib. So for us that will be 29 feet seven and three quarters. And this will be, everything's going to get shuffled and shimmed a little bit. So if we pull this measurement, I mean, we can just kind of go to the nearest eighth. We don't need to try to go to a 16th or a 32nd or anything. Um, so we'll call that 29 and three quarters. So I make a note of that and that's where the nib is. So when I lay out the plank, we'll lay it out, we'll mark all the bevels, we'll mark where the nib is. And then I'm going to go grab some cardboard 
and we'll make a cardboard template that fills in up here and matches the stem. And then when we mark it out, I'll just take that cardboard template, line it up with here, put the nib in, trace that out, and that'll give us this end of the plank. So this rabbit could use a little bit of cleaning up up here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark the plank out and I'll cut just outside of this line a little bit, do a little bit of work on the rabbit, put the plank in there, do a little bit of work on the plank, <clears throat> and kind of just work those together until this is really happy. We've been a little leery to go and cut too much of the rabbit. Um, we're at a point in the hull in the stem here, not as bad, but definitely in the stern where the angles are changing really dramatically, really quickly. And uh, with our limited rabbit cutting experience, um, it seems a lot safer to kind of peck away at it as we go so that we don't accidentally take off more than we need to. Um, so that's the pattern. And then I'll just line up the nib where my mark for the nib is. And uh, that'll mark out that plank. Like I said, in the stern, it's just a double gauge. It's super easy. So I'm probably gonna go grab an early lunch so that when grandpa comes down before his lunch, we can grab the plank, bring it in, and I can just get rolling on that. It's a bit early for lunch, but I had a pretty early breakfast, so it'll work out. After a bit of messing around, I got a straight line on here that I like, and uh, now I've got the long tape measure clamped down with these spring clamps along the line, and I can go through and transfer all of the measurements and I'll transfer where all the station molds are and where all the frames are and what degree they are. And then when that's done, we'll be able to set up the track and cut this side off. Um, before I do that, I'll mark for the bevels on the top and get that figured out as well while everything's clamped down and not moving. First one I got is two foot two inches. And that'll be seven degrees, and so on and so forth, all the way down the plank. All right, so I've marked all the way over to the stem here. Got all the stations and all the bevels marked. And I had written down here at 29 feet and three quarter inch is where the nib is. So at 29 three quarters, I made a little mark. So now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pull this tape out. I'm gonna go back over this with a Sharpie I'm going to write all the degrees going from stem to stern because that's what I'm going to be cutting with the saw so it'll make it easier to read and anywhere there's a big transition which since this plank is kind of midship and it's really flat in there there's really not a huge change of bevels but in the stern it kind of goes from three to nine degrees I think pretty quickly so I'll fill in between those so that as I go I can go three four five six um, even if I don't have those marks off the frame, we know that it'll just kind of consistently change. But it's a lot easier to read and see if you write them in Sharpie, especially in the direction that you're going when you go to cut it. So we've got some knots here, and wow, the camera makes these look a lot worse than they are. This one here isn't even really a knot. This is on the outer edge of a knot. So this is all really hard, tight grain, and there's nothing I'm worried about there. This one is a tiny little bit of bark inclusion, so I'm gonna have to drill that one out. Same thing over here, a little bit of bark inclusion. But I've got some up here that I've already drilled out, and you can see, and if you can see down in there, they're not very deep. So, half an inch at most, um, which isn't even halfway through the plank. So these are really not a big deal, and you can see that the grain grows out and around them because these are branches. So by drilling out just a little bit, uh, we're not really affecting any of the strength. This one is a pin knot, so that comes sideways through. So I'm gonna have to route out a little bit and put in a small graving piece there. And up here we have one, two, three, four, five, that one's a little bigger, six, seven, eight, nine, ten little pin knots that are all drilled out and then there's a few more underneath the blankets here. So I drilled them out. Some are 3 8 some are a little bit bigger and 5 8 but like you can see, most of them are really shallow. Um, and then I used some Fixo uh, Fast Set, 
which I have under here staying warm. So this stuff will harden and be paintable and sandable in four hours, which for a task like this is perfect. Um, so I got three heating pads underneath here, keeping those ones warm. So I'm gonna go work on some other stuff and then, I don't know, sometime after dinner, I'll come out, I'll pull these off, those will be good to go, and I can get this next round set. And by tomorrow morning, I'll have just about all of the uh, easy ones to do. And then these bigger ones with the graving pieces, I'm gonna wait until the planks cut out and I can see exactly where this goes and how deep I have to go. And um, so we'll tackle some of those a little bit later. Some of those I might tackle before we cut them out, but we'll see. If you're uh, super ridiculously picky, it uh, can be really challenging. So we put all the best stuff down low where it really matters. And now that we've got these big flat runs on the hull um, and we're out of that structural zone where the frames join the floor timbers, the little defects in this plank, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be anything to worry about. It's really just kind of the hassle of fixing them. All right, good morning. So last night, I let these plugs stay warm and came out and added a couple more and moved the heat pads over. And something is wrong because that epoxy is not hard. I can say with absolute certainty, I did not expect this this morning. So for some reason, two of these plugs just did not the epoxy didn't set up at all like not even a little bit but these ones all seem good the epoxy like you can see there's a little bit of epoxy here it's really hard it's not like it was over there same thing here we have a little bit of epoxy and that that seems really good so, since one, two, three, four, five, six were good, no, seven were good, and these four were bad, and these four were all clustered right together, if uh, it was the heat pad, and if this wasn't getting warm enough, if one of those pads, for whatever reason, wasn't generating as much heat as the other ones. Thankfully, these are just tiny little knot repairs, and they're not super critical. It's not like this happened on a plank scarf or a laminated timber or something. I mean, not really the end of the world, but it is a bit perplexing, especially since it really just seems to be these two. Um, I don't know, I'll grab the, uh, the saw and the plane and nip all these down and uh, plane them up and see how they look and see how they feel and see if it really is just these two or what yeah i don't know hmm. this is the last plank hopefully with a nib i think it should be which is nice because on the starboard side, we got a plunge cut to start it. And we got a plunge cut at a two degree bevel in this instance. So what we found is if one of us held the base down, we could release the depth gauge and we can kind of plunge and actually do that at an angle into the plank. Um, but since nobody's here to hold it, I'm just going to clamp it down and then uh, I'll plunge all the way through, stop the saw, set it so that the blade's just poking out the bottom and then we'll run down the length of it. Putting my fingers down here and cutting backwards is uh, not recommended, but in this instance, it works. Just gotta be really, really careful. All right, now I'm just gonna run down and follow the bevels. It's 
so we've got the nib and you can see I cut right up to it but the bit the saw is curved so it actually kind of angles away from it so what I do now is grab a handsaw and I'm just gonna cut like right up here just to get that strip off and then we'll pop the track off and we'll cut outside of where the uh, tip of the stem here is going to be and that way when we're carrying it out and bringing it back in whatever we're not worried about damaging this nib because it's pretty well protected um, same thing with like dinging up the edge and then once we go to fit it on the boat or once i go to fit it on the boat i'll actually cut this back and bring it in a little bit closer do a little cleaning up there pop the track off and then freehand the arc Alright, there's enough that uh, might be able to get a little something out of this for the interior or whatnot, so hang on to that. Or maybe somebody will use it for a bent frame in a boat or something. But the rest of that scrap and a big old plank. I think that'll do, pig. So you'll notice that this is taller and wider than it needs to be. Um, so that's so that when I put it in here, I can just clamp it down. I don't have to worry about it. And later on, we'll just uh, take the flush cut saw and cut it flush and plane it smooth and it'll be good to go. We have end grain here to end grain and end grain here to end grain. So that's not gonna be super, super strong. I mean, it'll be fine in this sense for sure. But if you were to make like a structural scarf, which this is not, um, you wouldn't want those steep angles in that end grain. But since it's so shallow, it's not structural, and I have this huge flat surface on the bottom here where I'm gonna glue face grain to face grain, it'll be plenty, plenty strong. Um, so you don't have to, you know, you don't really have to worry about those angles and stuff so much when you're doing little graving pieces. At least that's what I've been told, and that's what all my experience has shown. So, we'll make a template, we'll route this one out, and then we'll do this one, same deal, we'll just route it out and make a little piece to go in. And then I think, between one, two, and that last one down at the end, we can box these three, and then uh, while it's out there, I can go work on a couple more knots. So this morning I came out and opened up the boxes here where we had uh, the graving pieces that I just put in and I just took a Japanese saw and the hand plane and just got them fairly flat. Uh, they definitely need some more work but all I'm trying to do is get it to the point where when grandpa comes down after feeding the llamas we can uh, pull the boxes over, flip the plank, and then uh, I've got a, just a couple graving pieces to do on the other side. The outer side of the plank is a lot more clear than the side that's going to be inboard, which is the one that I've been working on. Yeah, so you'll notice here there's like a little bit of epoxy around the edge of the plug. And that's no big deal because the epoxy is really gap filling. Um, I mean, easily up to a quarter of an inch. And any gap that I have on any of these is not even close to that. Uh, and the other thing is where this plank's going to land. These will all be inboard. And they're going to end up just about where the bunks and the uh, water tanks are going to be. They're pretty low in the boat. So it's all going to get painted over and it'll never see the light of day. And all of these little fixes are, I mean, they're really shallow. They're less than half of the way through the plank. And structurally, they shouldn't pose any issues whatsoever. Uh, it's really just the pain in the butt time of going through and fixing them. And the last really big one I got to do is right here. So that's a pretty good sized one. Almost through the plank. And this might be one where I get the reamers and ream it out and uh, put a tapered plug in there. Because the grain goes right around it really nicely. And it doesn't come out, I mean, we still have a pretty good bit here from the edge. So instead of putting in a huge graving piece, Hopefully I can just get a decent sized plug in there.
Nice. All right. And believe it or not, we're gonna put the fat end here out against the water. And that seems kind of counterintuitive, but there's water pressure pushing down on the hull, which is actually gonna wanna help keep that plug in there. Uh, if you put the big side on the inside of the boat, uh, that water pressure is wanting to push that plug out. But there's so much surface area in here, and that oak is gonna swell so flipping tight around that plug that it's not gonna go anywhere. So let's go get one of those mid. So, ideally, we would chuck up a bunch of these blanks in the lathe and just throw a real quick and rough taper on them. And it's a lot faster and more accurate than doing it with the bandsaw. But I sent our lathe down to, a, well, we sent my lathe down to Costa Rica. And Joe gave us his, but it's not operational. Um, so that's one of the things that I need to get done, or we need to get done before the planking party. Because we're going to need a bunch of these for the cedar planks. Um, but for this one oak one for now... This will do the trick. So let's go see how it fits. Plug will sit right down in there. Comes right down and through. So I know, and I can hear some of you right now, that by plugging it this way, uh, we're exposing end grain. And you know what? You're right. And it's not 100% ideal. Face grain would be better sticking out here. But with that said, this is such a small amount of end grain showing. It's all gonna be painted over with many coats and white oak is not ring porous. So um, there's, it's kind of like bamboo where the tree goes through and plugs up um, all of the pores as it gets older. So with good white oak like this, it really shouldn't transfer any water into the hull. And it's quite rot resistant, um, and it's a tiny amount of end grain, so really, really not worried about it. So make a couple marks. I'll make this plug a little smaller. It doesn't need to be this gigantic when I put it in. Um, but that one is good to go. And with a plug this size, I really need to be careful about grain orientation. So it's actually going to want to sit in like that. Because it swells with the grain, I want it to swell this way so that it fights the board and doesn't try to split it. If you were to orient it in line and this plug were to swell more than this, it's putting outward pressure, uh, which is the weakest avenue on the grain. So we want to make sure that that's oriented well. On the tiny plugs, it doesn't matter as much. They're just not going to generate enough force to make a huge difference. But a bigger plug like this going all the way through absolutely could. So I want to be conscious of that. All right, so nip that off and then it's back to some really easy small ones, which I like. Huh? <laughs> Not in the play mood, huh? So last night, Grandpa and I brought the plank in. And this morning I've gone through and I've just been working on cleaning up the graving pieces here. So this is the plank, it just had a ton of little knots. I mean, not a ton, but a goodly amount. And none of them were very big and none of them were very deep, but it's a little bit of a pain fixing them all, but that's done. And I took an off cut from this plank and started fitting the nib here. So Alex and I have been wrestling these huge planks onto and off of the boat to fit the nib. And I don't know, I just like had an epiphany this morning that it would probably be worth it just to take an off cut from that plank that's the same thickness and uh, pattern it out and trim it and it would be a lot easier fitting that. And now I can trace that out onto the plank and cut it out and should be really, really close. Um, and this is the last oak plank and it's the last thing with a nib. So you can see we don't have quite the crazy point that we had going on lower here. So we can leave that come into a point and that'll make hanging all the subsequent planks a lot easier. Cause getting and fitting this little nib in here is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but it is better than having, in my opinion at least, it's better than having these really thin little edges, which is what we got on the garboard here. 
hence the rest of the nibs. So this looks pretty good. I'm gonna pop it off, throw it on the plank and uh, get that cut. Joe should be here just about any minute and we can start fitting this thing. Is your buddy here, Akiva? Yeah. Joe spoils Akiva. Joe pulled the pattern off here. Yeah, so I'll cut that with the handsaw, cut that a little bit with the skill saw, finish with the handsaw, and cut that with the skill saw, and then wrestle this bad boy on there. Okay. Been making good progress this morning. We got the nib fit pretty well there. And we've got the plank wrapped around the hull here. And everything seems to be snugging up and fitting really, really well. Really no issues at all until we got all the way back here at the stern. And I don't know how on earth I did this, but that plank is not long enough. So when we did the plank on the other side, we ended up, we always leave the plank extra and we ended up using basically all of that extra in here. And I don't know if I mismeasured, but all of the bevels are lining up really well. So I'm just wondering if that's really the difference between the outside edge here versus the inside edge as we wrap it around the boat. Because when I take the measurements, it's tight in the rabbit here and it's tight against the frames. I don't really know. Either that or I royally messed up somewhere. But we're gonna have to pull some measurements and probably gonna come back to about here where we get out of that real twist. And I'll cut it and we'll scarf on another piece and then we can steam. So another day to this plank because of my uh, folly. But I guess as we go up, we're just gonna have to make sure that these are plenty long because I'd rather be cutting it off than trying to add it like this so so we got the plank here clamped on grandpa's been helping me out so yesterday it cooked because it takes 24 hours for the glue to fire so we put in a new scarf we scarfed on like seven feet in the stern and now we got the real radical twist here to deal with so we've all got it all clamped up we got the turkey fryer here and then we're gonna get the pot of water boiling and the bag set up and we'll steam this last three feet or so. And then tomorrow we can get back to work fitting on it. But man, oh, it was so sad to bend that plank on here and end up a foot or six inches short. That was really, really a bummer. Probably one of my biggest errors yet. <laughs> I say yet, yeah, there will probably be more. Um, so I think we can get this hooked up, get the bag on it, and then I'll uh, bring it out and fire it up. She's a steaming. So we got about two hours or so, hour 45 minutes, and we'll start bending it on and seeing how it behaves. The nice thing with the bag is there's no real guessing. I'm just kind of come and push and see when it's ready to give. All right, this is fitting much better. Got a little bit more to do, but we're getting there. So the process is the same that Alex did on the other side. You just unspring the last seven feet here or so, take the Sharpie or a pencil, make some marks where I gotta take it off, plane underneath it with the hand plane, fit it back in. There's really no magic that we found to it or real quick solution other than slowly picking away at it um but at this point it's starting to get later in the day i've uh see that put a little skin in the game today and there's absolutely no food in the house i've been neglecting groceries while alex has been gone and just focused on out here so if i'm going to eat dinner i need to go buy some provisions <laughs> um so plank fits pretty good i'm gonna leave it clamped on the boat overnight um and just let it adjust more to its uh final shape and then tomorrow Alex will be back we'll pop it off we'll do a little bit more fitting on it and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get it fastened off soon 
and that'll be the last of the oak done with the oak so excited to try the cedar from what everyone has told us it will be much easier and i'm looking forward to that all right i'm gonna go buy some groceries <laughs> what's up wolf tired of being in the boathouse but dude i know this game i'm gonna go put you out and then you're gonna be out there for like 10 minutes and then you're gonna be whining and you want to come back in here I know. We need like a fenced racetrack over the garage or something where you can just run back and forth, don't we? Uh-uh, stay.